What's up, guys? Um, all right, so this is going to be a super quick video. It's here, happy Saturday. We're on the weekend. Um, not too long ago, I actually caught this uh, video from Vivek Ramaswamy on Flagrant. First time I'm ever watching Flagrant. Um, and I'm gonna just going to say my first reaction is Vivek is impressive. He continues to be impressive. And from a performance standpoint, I still don't know exactly where he's going to fit in America's future. But he's the one who ha he's got a, a huge um, he's got a huge purpose. Right. And it's good that I think it's good that he's not. That he's not in the running anymore um, because he's now on this platform. He's going on. I, don't, I guess he could have and has been doing that previously, going on different types of um, podcasts and, and shows and speaking with different people. But at first through this, it was a two hour video and I listened to all of it. And I'm not a fan of Andrew Schultz. I'm not a fan of his vision uh, some of the um, takes that he has on Kanye and just the way that he looks at left versus right or the right period, him being someone from the left. And I would say about five or so years ago, I started to kind of shut down my appetite for just hearing what the other side has to say, because I think it's detrimental to understanding who I am. And that's not for everybody. I think some people, it is important to hear both sides as they kind of come to an understanding of whether it be on a single topic or just in general. And it's not just politics. The way that when we think about left and right, it's really your viewpoint on the world. Um, and I don't, I'm not, I don't think of myself as a person on the right. I just look at the world and I, I will listen to people from the right, but I look at the world from my own standpoint, given relationships I've had, um, you know, business, whatever, beyond just relationships, interactions, uh, exposure to so on and so forth. And I think I've gotten a good portion of what the left considers their view on the world. And I kind of started to, it doesn't resonate with where I think the future is going to be for myself. So um, and I, it came out heavily in even this show, I think I hate personally, I do hate to just make things about race, but I do believe the left likes to make things, even the right likes to make things about race, but like the left will do it from a joking standpoint. Um, and I don't find those jokes particularly funny. I just don't laugh at them. I don't find that. I don't find it racist. I don't see the humor in it. And there were things throughout this podcast that I just, they all thought was really funny. And I just, I'm, I'm not able to laugh at it. Um, so therefore like it's certain things like that, where I just don't consume that type of content. However, I do understand. And as I was looking at some of these numbers, there's a boatload of people that either think like this, or they consume this form of content thinking it is helpful in one way or the other. I want to speak about this because from a few different standpoints, I am understanding how God is using Vivek still to this day. Um, after I did, after I talked about it um, last week when he suspended his campaign and then he was on the campaign trail with Trump, I was like, see, this is, this is not going to be good because then you're just in, in the background um, and you need your own voice. He has, he has to educate the new, he has to help educate uh, the future generations and people have already formed their opinion on Trump. And so therefore, if you're not watching a Trump rally or if you're not following his campaign, you're not going to be able to consume Vivek's message. At least that's how I was looking at it beforehand. And then he was on a uh, breakfast club a couple of days ago and it was like it confirmed it wasn't I didn't I didn't enjoy listening to that not because of the vague's um take on anything but it's just what are we getting out of this what's the purpose of this and it I'm at the point when I think about um Charlemagne and DJ Envy um they aren't smart enough to keep up with 
a mind like Vivek and to keep up with the sign of the times or where we're going. And I hope to say that that's like the millennial generation, the, the cream of the crop when it comes to millennials. Um, they're just not there. They're not able to. And I don't think Dame pointed out some things when it comes to, you know, them satisfying their bosses and just their way, their purpose for even coming to work. Um, I, I'm just not sure that they're able to even have the type of conversation that can help the youth. And this is why I stopped listening to the, uh, the Breakfast Club at, about a decade ago. Um, and whenever a vi- there is a viral moment, which is why after listening to that, it's like, you have to have that gotcha moment then to find out, oh, there's somebody on the Breakfast Club that we should listen to. And there wasn't a gotcha moment, but no, but you can tell Charlemagne and DJ Envy, it's not that they're looking for that, but that's the only reason they get views. No one's listening to them anymore. However, on this episode of Flagrant, and I can't say that Schultz does this regularly, he actually showed an appetite to understand the vague and how he, you know, I think it was actually Charlemagne that made the introduction because he mentioned it in the breakfast club the other day, but I do believe that it's important to listen to this show and then start to feel out the way to interact with some of these people. Um, And I, I mean, I don't really have like, I'm not at that level where I, I'm supposed to be interacting with them and trying to bring them in closer to understanding what we're looking at here. But it's certainly important to kind of keep the frame and know that, you know, Vivek's agenda is one that can solve a lot of a prop, a lot of America's problems. And it's kind of what you, I person listening to this and certainly this far in understands what the strategy is to make this world heaven on earth. Um, and whatever that means to you, literally, I just, we, we've got to understand that the attempt that we, that I'm not going to use left and right anymore. The attempt that the agenda, um, the attempt made by the managerial class. And and if you watch it, you'll understand it failed. And now we are reprogramming the minds to open up a new way of being and living and executing an actual strategy that will not fail. Um, And so Vivek's role in all of this is important. And he took the time to, and he has the patience to say, okay, this is the part that you're not getting. Let me work with you on it. But the first little bit, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, there's really no way that you can explain this to somebody. You have to have a, a part of you that is saying, you know what, this isn't working. And then you go and find your own questions rather than someone like myself that, you know, went through that rabbit hole, asked what, like, I don't want to say Googled it because there's a lot of things that you can not do today that I was able to f- discover when I was trying to get questions answered. Um, those days are over. Uh, and we are, that's when, you know, the war, it was like a hidden hand. Now this is full fledged, you know, censorship, canceling, um, you know, painting the picture of this person, bad, this person, white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. So it might actually be from having conversations like this. If you can stomach, if you have the patience, if you're still interested in helping people that just don't get it. Since 2020, I've come to the, I personally sat with, you know what, if you didn't get it by now, you don't want to get it. I can't work with that because I've got people that I've got to help sort of in my own world. But at the same time, they're not stopping programming people to hate truth. They're not stopping programming people to accept, uh, honestly, a hellish version of America and earth. This, this, I'm not inspired to like particularly do more, but I am certainly more optimistic that, I mean, at the end, uh, Schultz was like, you know, basically, ladies and gentlemen, the next vice president of America, basically saying, hey, Trump is going to win and he's going to be the VP. Now, also in this, go and watch it, please watch the whole thing, because there's pieces that you're going to say, huh, 
this is this, huh? You know, you're gonna have your own moment. He said, if that's the if that's the role for him, he's gonna have to have a real sit down with Trump and say, hey, are you actually looking to do this? That has to do my the way the reason I can't really trust Trump anymore is because of the COVID stuff. Um, there are more things that when it comes to Trump and even Kanye, I'm not able to trust them to be the leader that does for everybody what they once claimed to have wanted to do. They don't, they don't need to do that solely. I do believe Ye, just by way of his art, is going to help people think outside of the box. Cool. If that's your role, happy with that. We do need so like, okay, the president, and and I think what Vivek is basically trying to say is it doesn't have to come from politics and it's not going to be one person. We need all, and that's why I use this background, we need all of our roster to be one top level and two, not all working, it being in the same position because then there's a depth chart. So we need wide receivers that can run routes and you know, get in the backfield in today's offensive um, strategy playbook, if you will. And and I'm speaking as a, a football player. So if you don't understand the rhetoric, so be it. It's going to land for some people. We need a quarterback that can kind of rally the troops, um, set the tone in the huddle, and then do whatever needs to be done, either run himself, throw, hand the ball off, no matter what it is, manage the clock, uh, manage the game. We need linemen. We need running backs. We need everybody. And that's offense lingo, but same goes for defense. So it just speaks to, and Vivek is really a talent that is like impressive right now at the combine. I don't know and nowhere does anybody really know where we're going to put him on the roster, but absolutely it's like one that is almost like um, Richardson last year, like is just wowing people across the board, right? Strength, speed um you know precision passing whatever it is so i i'm not i mean i'm definitely not ruling him out to playing qb which i'm going to say is the president at this point and and don't hold me to it cuz i haven't put a ton of thought into it the pur purpose of this video is really just to shine a light on this platform say that basically what andrew salt did for and his team for these you know 2 hours here is something that uh, Charlemagne is, I think, incapable of doing. I'm not sure if it's because he's so tied to his bosses or whatever this, whoever pays to allow him to speak. But I also feel in my heart that it's just a lack of like intellect. And that's not a knock anymore. Listen, not everybody is going to be scientists, not everybody's going to be doctors. I'm not saying Charlemagne is dumb. But I'm certainly saying there's a level where you have a ceiling. And I don't want to point it on Charlemagne. There's a lot of influencers that just aren't capable of thinking at a certain level. Therefore, they go to jokes. They um, just talk down on people. They uh, ridicule people, mock people, because they can't wrap their head around what they're saying. And they just may not even have a desire to do it. Uh, but that doesn't stop sort of, you know, the game from being played. We've got to help people understand what good looks like, what truth is, and where we're going in 2024 and beyond. Um, so check out this uh, this show. I am going to link it in the description here. Um, I'm, this is the only episode I've ever seen of Flagrant, probably the only one I ever will watch. Um, but we'll see sort of hopefully more people and he's got a pretty good platform people a lot of people are going to listen maybe with a different ear hopefully it's not just the vague people that get it and then the rest that stay in their silo and just be like oh you know whatever i don't know how they would um how they point the finger at the right nowadays because from my end truth is the truth you don't like it you're shutting down to what the truth is whether you want to call them names it doesn't stop the truth from being the truth check it out um, let me know what you think in, in the comments. Um, I am interested to know if this is something that you've come across. And and it's interesting because I talked about, I think it was on Full Send. What a, oh, it was uh, Whitlock or Stephen A on Full Send. Telling you, it's the same thing. Truth being the truth, a lie being a lie. Those that are spewing lies 
they are against the people. They are spewing poison in the minds, which is hurting people from understanding reality. Um, so I'm not going to mix Vivek and Stephen A. really in this in this video, but I will say this video is definitely something to uh, check out. Let me know what you think. I'm C. Moses. We're manifesting heaven on earth.